I have with me today in the studio two of the co-chairs for ARC's 50 Forward Initiative. Welcome to Georgia's Secretary of State Karen Handel and Milton Little. He is president of United Way of Metropolitan Atlanta. Thank you both for being here. I appreciate your time on the show. It is my pleasure. I have to ask you guys though, seriously, both of you are so busy. What compelled you to say, yes, I would love to be in the creative process as we look for the next 50 years? Well, you know, uh, Susan, as you look at the things that are on coming up for the future, it is imperative that we think long term around what we want our city to be, and especially when you consider that it's not just about the city of Atlanta, but about the region and candidly about our state when you understand the impact the city has on the state as a whole. And how about you? Well, I know you have a lot to do. Well, for a couple of reasons. Number one, it was just an honor to be asked. Uh, second, United Way of Metropolitan Atlanta has for more than 100 years been at the forefront or at least in the center of some of the most important things that have happened in the region. And so we anticipate over the next 50 years we're going to be a major player and I think this is a place where we need to, to be and some, some roles we need to play. Let's look at, at some of the specifics. We know that the initial phase is supposed to last roughly two, two and a half years. But, but how will these quarterly forums be structured? such as, you know, who's going to attend, who participates? It'll be a broad cross-section of leaders um, from the private sector, government, nonprofit, business, um, coming together to hear from speakers who can really help us um, get outside of our own sort of comfort mm -hmm. zone in terms of what's happening um, around the country and also to sort of look towards the future. And then we will also um, be into different task force looking at various components of what a community um, needs to focus on, whether it's sustainability or transportation or um, human services issues or education, all of those different components. So I'm hearing international leaders, national leaders, people who are on the forefront doing it well elsewhere. Absolutely. And you've got uh, colleges and universities that will help pull together uh, white papers uh, that will help stimulate the thinking. And you've got the public. Um, there are going to be lots of great ideas that come from ordinary citizens who are part of these public forums. So those ideas will, will spring up from lots of different places. I was going to say some of them you had mentioned tel technology, health care, economy, globalization, workforce development, transportation, energy. Uh, sustainability was the topic of the first forum. Why sustainability? Why would that be the first one you decided to do? Well it's hard to think about what the what the world would look like 50 years from now if you haven't quite figured out how we're going to make sure the air is clean, the water is clean, that we've addressed these economic sustainability issues, finding that delicate balance mm -hmm. between ensuring business can thrive and prosper, but, but also addressing those sort of basic infrastructural needs as well. So from, from solving those issues, mm -hmm. Um, a lot of other things are possible, but if you don't make sure those basics are in place, uh, the rest of it uh, just is unlikely to happen any as, way you want it. As we, we have discussed on this show in the past, sustainability and, and some of the business opportunities that exist if people are willing to take advantage of them. Absolutely. I mean, already for the state, um, we are um, growing um, in the area of biofuel. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think more and more that will continue um, to, to take place. And we've got um, real strong corporate um, uh, partners in Georgia Power and Southern Company and GE who are doing very innovative things in energy um, conservation. It's hard sometimes to get the masses moving and to really get them to begin to break out of today and think about tomorrow. It is. So you have your work cut out for you in that respect. Yeah, we do. You do. Uh, we do. But I think one of the things that we've talked about um, is uh, having futurists mm -hmm. come and address the audiences. Those folks sort of get you thinking about things in ways that you just wouldn't, mm -hmm. given where you are right now. Uh, and so there's going to be a lot of effort to really expand mm -hmm. how we think about things, make sure we're not sticking in our little uh, mm -hmm. sandboxes. Uh, but really thinking more broadly and engaging lots of voices and perspectives that go beyond our own. How do you think this will make life better for Atlantans in the future? Well, I think if we are very serious about addressing some of the issues around transportation, around uh, water use, around education, um, what's education going to look like 50 years from now? How, what's technology going to do to the way that civic actors engage? I mean, we've got to think about all of those things um, so that we can create the future that we want rather than be captive by our own unwillingness and inability to really pull together, think hard, 
and put the pieces in place that will guarantee that good future. Karen, last word, hopes for this project. My hope is that we are able to really put together a very dynamic, robust vision for the metro region that will put us on a, a path towards um, actually implementing it. Very good. I appreciate your time. Milton Little and uh, Karen Hill, it was a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank, well, thank you. you.